Could you tell me when the idea of purpose, at least on a personal level, like we think about Best Buy after that, but when purpose on a personal level started spinning up for you and you started realizing how important it was? So 1992. So there was two milestones there. One was from a business standpoint, and then the other one from a very personal standpoint. Uh, on the business standpoint, I, I was having dinner with a prospective client, uh, Jean-Marie Descarpentries is his name, and with a few of my partners at McKinsey who we were trying to sell our services to him. And instead, he gave us a lecture. He was himself a former McKinsey consultant. And he had just come back from a, an event with other CEOs. And he told us what, what they had talked about. And he said that the purpose at the time, right? So many, many years before Larry Fink, the purpose of a corporation is not to make money. It's an imperative, but it's not the purpose. And there's a big difference. And he said in business, there's three imperatives. People, because you need to have good people with the right tools and the right motivation. Business, you need to have customers who are happy and are paying enough to cover the cost. And in financial, you need to make money. And it's excellence on the people imperative that leads to excellence on the business imperative that leads to excellence on the financial imperative. But the ultimate goal, the purpose, is not the money. It's about you know helping people grow. It's 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 about doing something good in the in the world, and that stayed with me forever. Because then, he, of course, he draws the practical implications of that. For example, he said, when you run your monthly business review, don't start with the financial results. End with the financial results. Your CFO will make sure there is enough time, but start with people and organization, then go to customers and business, and then finish with financials. So I thought that was, I mean, it really stayed with me. About the same time, so two friends of mine who are monks in a uh, religious congregation, uh, who had gone to business school and known them for uh, a long time, asked me to write with them an article about the philosophy and theology of work. And okay, I said, all right, so I need to do some work on that. So what did I do? I, did, I took a biblical index. I was raised a Catholic, so I took a biblical index. And I looked in the Bible at all of the places that talk about work. And of course, we have this image of work, you know, some dude sinned in paradise. And as a result, we were punished and we had to work. In fact, the, in French, the word work, which is travail, comes from Latin tripalium, which is an instrument of torture, you know. So we have this view of work as a punishment. And of course, later on in society, we also had the work of something you do so that you can do something else that's really fun. The truth is that, and a rabbi once told me, after I was doing a speech, did you know, do you know that man used to work in paradise? And I said, yes, of course. Because of course in Genesis, uh, you know, God gave us the earth to embellish and, and, and uh, take care of. In the rest of the Bible, most of the uh, words around work is about the idea of work as part of our fulfillment as human beings and as a way to do good things to other people, right? The golden rule. And in fact, you know, the, the first part of, the, of my book, The Heart of Business, is all about this, right? Why do we work? And my view is that part is our, is work is part of our search for meaning part of our fulfillment, Viktor Frankl was, talks about it in his wonderful book, Man's Search for Meaning. And I love, you know, the, the Lebanese poet uh, Khalil Gibran, who says that work is love made visible. And so going back to purpose, every company now is talking about their purpose and they're doing some great work in this area. In many ways for me, you know, this purpose discussion starts from within and from each of us. So I'll tell you a story about this, Dan. So uh, at Best Buy, you know, every quarter we would do an offsite to, talk, to work on our strategy, our plan, our progress. And during one of these offsites, maybe in 2016, I'd ask every one of the executive team members, so let's say 10 of us, to come with a picture of themselves when they were little. And then over dinner, we shared with each, other's, with each other our life story and our purpose in life, which was important to us, what drives us. 
this was transformative, right? Because we got to know each other at a much more profound and personal level. In America, in, 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 forget about America, in the corporate world, we rarely have these discussions, right? We talk about business and cost and revenue and earnings and you know, uh, performance reviews. Uh, so we got to know each other at a much more personal level. So these are human beings. We saw that for at least 80% of us, our missions in life were similar. It was about doing something good to other people, you know, which at the end of the day is the essence of, uh, of life, I think. Um, and so that gave us the courage to say, well, we're in charge of Best Buy and we work at Best Buy. And at that time, we were working on our strategy, what we wanted to uh, become when we would grow up and, and so forth. And we said, you know, we have the opportunity to make Best Buy even more so than today, a force for good. And so for me, there's a connection between our individual purpose and the purpose of the company. And when these two are connected, magical things happen. And so my journey continued, you know, after 1992, it was uh, other moments, you know, uh, spiritual moments. I did the spiritual exercises of Ignatius of Loyola at a time in my life where I was, I was a bit lost, you know, the midlife crisis. So that helped me refine what I thought was my calling in life and so forth. Uh, and so for me as leaders, right, are you passionate about leadership then? Yes, you are. Uh, you know, remember when we uh, used to fly on airplanes a long time ago? Uh, what we were told, right, the oxygen mask will come down. And we're told to put the mask on ourselves first because we, before we can help others. And for me, it's the same, right? Uh, or during the, the lockdown, if you, can, if you cannot go outside, you have to go inside and really be crisp about you know, who you are, who you want to be, how you want to be remembered, and then connect that with what your work is. Long answer to your question. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm thankful for it. Um, and it's, it's in the book, obviously, and part of, part of the story. Oh, uh, speaking of work. So I love those uh, stories from uh, your youth. Uh, you got hit by a forklift. Uh, you weren't excited about working and you learned, you know, you just wanted to get out of work. Um, uh, by the way, how is your tailbone or your back? You hurt your back or something. It's good, oh, good. right? Oh, good. Thank 